100 days of hardcore Minecraft. That is a lot. Over 30 hours of in-game time. Now what if I do that but I have no access to trees and any land of any sort? Welcome to 100 days in an ocean-only world inspired by Paul GG and Luke the Notable. My goals for this series is to at least get some netherite armor and also to slay the dragon. That's enough talking, let's jump right into this video. Hmm, day one. Looking around, trying to scan my surroundings. It's a whole lot of emptiness. There are no trees around, no land around. Oh, some nice fish though. We got some tropical fish over here. These guys are pretty cool. Some more tropical fish over there. There's a ravine here too, but uh, I can't really go down there. That's a bit deep. Okay, so I should get to work. I need to find a shipwreck for some wood, I guess. That's a good starting point. After a bit of swimming in one direction, I found one of these pretty soon. We are in an ocean after all. There should be a ton of these lying around. Inside of the chest, I found some leather pants as well as a ton of rotten food. Flesh. That is going to be helpful for our food supply. Nighttime was coming soon and I wasted a bunch of time trying to like make like a little platform out of sand but I'm kind of dumb because I forgot that sand falls. So wasted my time on a lot of nothing. I then tried to make like an air bubble next to the ship so it'd be a lot easier for me to get this wood. This was proven to be pretty hard though. After a lot of going up and down and swimming for some air, I think I finally got it. Oh come on, can we do this? No, oh I, I just messed up. I did not mean to swim down there. Can we still do this? Please don't die. Oh my goodness, one heart. I almost had to restart this run on the night of day one, but I think we're okay now. On day two, I gathered enough wood to make myself a door, which I could place anywhere and get me some air. We were probably going to be using this door for like the rest of the series. Now I spent day two gathering a lot of wood from the shipwreck because I knew that we were going to need a lot more of it later, especially to craft some tools. So I started off with a wooden pickaxe and I began mining around our area. There was some cobblestone literally right here, so this was perfect. Hey, let's go. Our first achievement is Stone Age. After a little bit, I realized that this wasn't the best way of mining because we don't have any ores. So I went into a nearby ravine, spotted some iron right away. Now it's time to get to work. I got a stone pickaxe now too. Mine some coal over here as well. And I also found an actual cave that wasn't underwater which made mining a lot easier. I ended up mining all the way over to day 4 and now I'm back at home base here to craft a sword as well as a furnace. Once I get this iron smelted I think I'm gonna make a shield and some armor. I'm geared up and ready to go back to that ravine to fight some mobs down there. But first I'm gonna see if I can get some fish because I really need food right now. Um, today I learned that tropical fish is a terrible food source. It doesn't even smelt in the oven, and it only gives me half a bar of food, so, um, that's not very good. I returned to the cave, and no joke, like, three seconds from when I entered the cave, there was just a pile of diamonds right there. I couldn't get it though, because I still have my stone pickaxe, but looking around, there was loot everywhere. I could not wait. I had to start mining. I think I was gonna get some iron and quickly make an iron pickaxe so I can come here and mine everything. Well, from days five to seven, I fought some mobs, as well as craft my iron pickaxe so I could actually mine these diamonds over here. It looked like it was a four vein. That is not bad at all. It's probably more than we need right now on day like five it is, I think. But yeah, just look at this madness, man. We have literally gold right next to lapis, right next to iron. Like this is just completely nuts. There is treasure just everywhere. I came home with all of our loot and I began smelting our iron in the furnace. I made an iron helmet as well as a chest to store some goodies inside of our home base. And when I did that, I kind of messed up our house, but it was pretty easy to clean up. There we go, water's drainer now. I think we're good now. I think one of my next goals is to figure out a way to get a bed. There's not really any string around. Do I have to fight spiders for this? And that is when I remembered that in that mineshaft I saw earlier, there's gotta be some cobwebs in there. This pretty much saved me. Also, just look at this, man. The ore generation, is it like buffed or something in this new 1.17 update, bro? There's coal, iron, and redstone all just next to each other. This is making my job so much easier. And on the morning of day 9, I noticed this huge hole. I don't think that was there earlier. I think all that sand must have fallen down when I like broke a hole in my house. It's kind of funny. Well, anyway, I think today's the day where I'm actually going to start building like an above water base. Let's get a platform going on up here. I converted most of the platform into some slabs and now I got a chest. I moved everything up here. Time to just dump everything in here and get a clean inventory. I only needed one more piece of string and there were no cobwebs left so I had to fight this guy. And now we had more than four pieces of string. That is perfect. Let's get out of here. If I can get out of here that is. Jeez, I was stuck there for a second. After a good night's sleep, I began more expansion of the platform that I was currently living on. I'm probably going to try to make this thing look a lot nicer later but cobblestone is the only thing that we have right now so I don't really got a choice. Later, I just grabbed my boat and I began swimming out to see if I could find another shipwreck or something to get some more loot from. 
this was a bit far but i do know my coordinates and my general direction so i think i should be okay oh wow look at these dolphins man these guys are fast and i also have a potion effect it's called dolphins grace i don't know what that does but anyway let's go back to this uh red nether pearl here um we got a chest with some nice fortune three golden shovel whoa i'm getting hurt whoa i forgot i forgot my air for a second man i'm just gonna go in and grab everything and then i'll take a look at it so it looks like we got a sweeping edge three golden sword that is that is pretty nice along with some flint and steel and i see that gold block right there we're gonna mine that all right so i'm a bit hungry i think i'm just gonna eat this suspicious stew let's see what happens oh that's weakness okay that's not bad at all i thought i was gonna get like nausea or something also there's a shipwreck like right next to this thing let's head over there right now i think this shipwreck is like a jungle styled one in the chest there were some weird loot not very good i was gonna grab the whole chest and take it with me it'll probably be a lot easier yeah but at least there's a bunch of logs over here that i can get i think i'm gonna gather all these jungle logs it's good to have some variety now back at home i put a lot of my stuff in the chest but now that we have potatoes i think we can start a farm now the problem is just getting dirt though but there was some dirt on the side of the ravine that i always go to so that was pretty easy to obtain i spent this day basically setting up a farm for myself to plant my potatoes now hopefully we can actually have a good food source while I'm waiting for my food to grow, I went back down into the mine to try to mine some more and fight some mobs. For the next couple of days, I'm also going to be gathering a ton of stone because I want to start building like a platform as well so that we can actually have like an established base set up. When I came back, I made myself a stone cutter. We got our iron smelted in this furnace right here. We got a ton of it. I think I'm going to be using a lot of like black stone or not black stone, deep slate in this in this build because I don't know, the deep slate brick slabs look pretty cool. I might have to use some of these. I'm just going to go with it now. Um, Hopefully I don't regret it because I just used all of my deep slate so i found this like generally flat area that's kind of near our old little house over there uh, i think i'm going to start building this thing in this area not sure if i want it on the water or if i want it elevated though so i've got this like circle design right now and i did elevate it like two blocks or so above the water i think it might look a bit better with like some pillars coming down but these colors look perfect man i gotta use these in some other builds that i make bro the, the black on gray that's pretty cool I kept on working on the base on day 15, but I changed my mind with this deep slate thing. I'm going to have like a layer of normal stone brick slabs here. And then as you can see over there on the top, we'll have some of the deep slate. So it's kind of like a contrasting layer thing. So I got to go back and remove all these deep slate slabs, man. These things take a while to break. Also went and gathered some more dirt for this little section over here. I think we're going to turn this into like a farm area, maybe on both sides. And also I'm having water reach these farms by just putting some water blocks underneath those slabs. It looks really cool with the water dripping down like that let's go we got the first harvesting session of the world looks like we got a good amount of potatoes and some carrots as well pretty sick but we can start moving these into the new farm now all right um since we have diamonds i'm going to take three of our diamonds and turn them into a diamond pickaxe let's go mining because we got to fight the ender dragon here so we're definitely gonna have to get geared up fast cannot forget my doors real quick i need my air down here oh i found this really cool water cave and you will not believe what i found toward the end of it i was swimming through i saw some coal and there were some diamonds just right there chilling by this water cave it was a little bit worrying though because there was some lava underneath and i thought i lost my diamonds for a second but we are underwater so it's kind of okay because i think the water just turns the lava automatically into obsidian anyway this turned out to be a nice five vein of diamonds day 17 time to gather some obsidian this is going to be great fun and uh, i didn't really know how much obsidian to get so i just got like this whole patch and it was 13 Bruh. no i lost that piece okay never mind i guess we're getting 12 pieces of obsidian all right we're back from all that mining and i got a ton of good loot again i also ended up just getting 16 obsidian in total because i forgot how much i need i really don't want to do the math right now i think i need is it 10 for the portal i don't know if it's 10 or 12 i'm also gonna need like four or so for the enchantment table well we don't have leather so time to kill some spiders because i think we can fish out leather we need some string though yeah, for the next two days, I just sat down and fished. I listened to some music with my headphones. It was quite a relaxing time. The fish weren't biting as often as I hoped, but at least I was having fun. And once my fishing rod was gone, I never managed to get any, like, junk or anything. I'm pretty sure leather counts in the junk category. But yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a tough time trying to catch some leather. There's gotta be a better way of me doing this. So I kinda sat there and I was just stuck. I was not sure what to do. But then I was saved by the Minecraft wiki. I looked up any other ways of obtaining books and it turns out you can actually get them from a shipwreck there's a 34 percent chance boys and girls it's time to go shipwreck hunting all right first shipwreck spotted let's go check out what we got inside of this first one dude where is the chest i can't really oh there it is okay let's see what we got here oh yes we got books let's go on our first shipwreck now we got five which is gonna be enough for our enchantment table but i think i'm gonna try to go out and find maybe a couple more see if we can get some more books because we're gonna need bookshelves if we want our enchantments to be a bit better now in this second shipwreck there were actually two chests now 
Now, I swear there was only one in shipwrecks. I did not know you could actually find two. Anyway, first chest was an absolute dud. There was nothing in there. And inside of this second chest, it was just full of iron. So yeah, this whole shipwreck, nothing good in here that we really needed. I just decided to head home because I was getting pretty far. But anyways, I made two chests here because yeah, things are getting really full in the first one. I do have five books though, which means I should be able to make only one bookshelf. And then I'll still have enough left over to make myself my enchantment table. Let's just craft it over here. Never remember the recipe in this game. All right, uh, I think I'm just gonna set it down here somewhere for now because I just want to get rid of my levels right now. Hmm, what can we enchant? I think maybe we'll start off with our diamond pickaxe. I'll wait till I get diamond armor to do the armor. All right, anyway, we got efficiency one here. I think I'm just gonna take that just nice and simple. Now, I think I'm gonna craft a diamond sword and then enchant that as well. Now, knock back on... Yeah, I'm just gonna go with sharpness, just simple. Sharpness is all we really need since we only have one bookshelf here. Probably won't be getting anything better. After all that enchanting, we have a lot of good gear so early on, so I think I'm gonna spend some time doing some more building. I'm gonna try to farm a lot more deep slate so then I can eventually fill out this entire platform. All right, and after a bit, I'm just moving my stuff slowly from like base to base. Anyway, here's what it's looking like. We have a lot of stuff flat. We have two farms on either side and I just kind of plopped all my stuff down right here because I don't really know. I don't really have like a definitive place to put all my stuff. So I'm just plopping it down. And yeah, I'm planning on expanding this stuff. Like as you can see, there's some pathways going out on all four sides of this. So I guess we can have a lot more space if we need. Right now, we don't really need that much space so I'm not really worrying about it. I also spent a lot of my time transferring my items from base to base, as well as kind of sorting them over there. I'm going to have one chest for like building blocks, another chest for like valuable items, and then I'll have a chest just for some random items that I don't really have sorted. And on day 27, I had all of our crop fields basically full, and our food source was actually looking really good now. I don't think I ought to worry about food anymore. I've got potatoes cooking, and I've got cod cooking. We eating good tonight. I also went back to my old base and cleared it completely out, because I do not want like a slab of cobblestone just floating in the ocean. That looks kind of ugly. So I want to get into the nether now, but first, I had to smelt some cobble because I need to make some smooth stone for this pathway. I decided I do not want the nether portal like on the same island thingy as my main one, so I'm going to kind of build it outwards and kind of create like an extension that way it's not too close to our main base. And so that night I constructed our nether portal. It's kind of off center, but I don't really know how to fix that because I made my path like five blocks wide. It's whatever. Probably gonna end up moving it anyway, but let's hop inside. We need to go deeper, alrighty. So it looks like we have a pretty safe spawn. Kind of just in like a nether ravine looking thing. Whoa, big drop down there. All right, this is a pretty nice spawn. There's not many mobs around here. So I started digging a tunnel to get out of this like nether cave and quickly found a warped forest, I think. I, I don't know. Oh, this is a crimson. This is a crimson forest. Um, but yeah, there were some hoglins around. Pretty dangerous. Um, I was not sure really what to do. I think I'm just gonna grab some of this wood and just leave. Because I feel like I might need some better gear before I start to mess with these guys. So I headed down into the mines to try to find some more diamonds. I don't really need any other ore. I have a ton of iron. I don't need gold. I don't need redstone. I don't really need anything else. And I've got a ton of lapis. So I'm kind of just solely looking for diamonds right now. Well, I was strip mining to find diamonds and I came across this really empty looking mineshaft thing, which probably means that there's a mineshaft nearby. And I heard some lava, so I started mining this way. And look at this, man. We've got redstone. We've got lapis. Hopefully we can find some diamonds around here. And soon I actually did find diamonds in like another mineshaft area. But first in this chest, there were some glow berries i've i've never heard of that that must be part of the 1.17 update i just don't know about it name tags as well pretty nice but these diamonds is what we are looking for and it's only a three vein i was kind of hoping for some more we're not really getting many big veins of diamonds right now and once i headed home i only managed to get three diamonds in total which is a bit sad but it's all right we'll go down there and we'll get a lot more later so i could make a helmet right now if i wanted to but i think i'm just gonna wait till i get some more diamonds first yeah i'm just gonna dump all of my stuff back put these glow berries in here but right now we also need to get some books because right now one bookshelf is not enough at all for any decent enchants but that's gonna be pretty difficult because like the only way that we can get books or leather is either to fish or to go shipwreck hunting so that day i went out and tried to explore and find some more shipwrecks good thing that they are super common in this ocean only world the first shipwreck i found did not have any books in it just a bunch of food and moss blocks i got attacked by a puffer fish on my way to my second shipwreck that wasn't very good but also in this shipwreck we had no luck the first chest just had some paper and the second chest just had feathers and paper as well. Jeez, we really need to figure out a better way of getting leather. So on day 33, I crafted a fresh new fishing rod and I spent this entire day just trying to fish for some leather. If you guys have any ideas on how I can get some leather, please comment it down below because I am struggling here. 
Toward the end of the day though, I did manage to fish up two pieces of leather which was nice, but it took a long time and it was really boring. Well it is day 34 and I want to say thank you for all of your helpful comments about how to get leather. I actually had no idea that you could get leather from trading with piglins, so we are going to give that a shot today. Well finally we will actually put our gold to some use, let's bring this stuff into the nether. Alright so coming out, I don't really see any piglins near me. Uh, yeah, there's some bad news. There's not really any piglins anywhere near me. I've had to travel pretty far to try to find some, taking a lot of fall damage, which is not ideal. But finally, we were able to find some piglins right down here. It's gonna be a struggle to get down, but we will move. And so I eventually picked out these two right here and began trading with them. I got the advancement, ooh, shiny. It took a few tries, but eventually these guys decided to give me some leather. It was four leather, in fact, which is a lot. Way more than I was getting from fishing, so all you guys that encouraged me to do this, thank you so much. It's really saving me so much time. Once I used up all the gold pieces that I had, I checked my inventory and I had 11 pieces of leather. Very nice considering this barely takes any work. Before I left though, I gathered some gold and some quartz as well. I'm gonna use this gold to trade with these guys more. Well back at home, I'm thinking about getting a silk touch pickaxe for mining this gold because I get way more gold out of it if I get a silk touch pickaxe. Because mining the nether gold ore without a silk touch pickaxe only gives you about like 6 gold nuggets or so around that number, 6 or 7, but mining with a silk touch pickaxe gives you a whole bar. After using all the leather that we got today, I was able to make four new bookshelves. And now after placing them all down, I can get level 10 enchants, which I don't remember what the last one was, but this one has to be better. Plus we can get efficiency too now on this iron axe, so this has to be an improvement. So after doing a bunch of exploring, I'm going to take some time and work on our base, because there's still so much I want to do with it. It's not just going to be this one platform. Now there was a lot of materials that I had to gather to build this base, but I finally started to get to work, which is what you are watching in this time lapse. Now later on in the time lapse, you'll notice that I had to break some stuff off because after building two more of the like segments I realized that they were like one block too big so I had to go back and completely change everything which was super annoying. I always mess up on these kind of things. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. Here is what we got. I've got like four sections kind of coming out and you can see that I'm kind of trying to connect all four of these sections with like a pathway that'll make this whole base like really circular at the end. It's gonna take a while though. I'm not too close to getting that thing done. I just need to smelt some more stone and get some more coal as well. So with our newly smelted gold, I'm gonna take the rest of this and bring it into the nether. We're gonna be trading with some more piglins for some leather. Wait a minute, that just rhymed. Luckily this time I was able to locate a piglin that was near my portal. I did not have to walk super far. Jeez, you piglins are crazy. How much gold does one need? Oh, come on. Oh, I do not want gravel, man. Please just give me some more leather. Oh, whoa, Gast, where are you coming from? Yeah, and I didn't have too much luck with leather this time. I spent over like 25 or so gold bars and I was only able to get 7 pieces of leather. Still didn't really matter that much though since we were out of paper. I'm gonna have to go back to shipwreck hunting because I don't really know how to get paper right now. I haven't seemed to found any sugarcane anywhere. This might be an issue. I woke up on day 42. It was a beautiful morning. I hopped inside of my boat. We're gonna go shipwreck hunting once again. This time we're mostly gonna be looking for paper, but books is gonna be great as well. It's harder for me to find shipwrecks now since I've like found most of them that are near my base, I was only able to come across one. But inside of this first chest, we had a lot of goodies. We had diamonds, we had iron and gold, and a bottle of enchanting which I used right after. It basically did nothing. Once I made my way to the second chest, I was delighted to see 24 pieces of paper. This was great. Of course, I snatched the chest and I decided before I was going to leave, I'm going to try to gather as much of the wood around here as I can because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be low on wood pretty soon since I'm using a lot of it on bookshelves right now. So I'm going to try to clear out as much of this as possible. Jeez, look at this shipwreck now. Well, it's actually more of what remains of it since there's not much left. It's more of a shipwreck now than it was before. Now back at home, I'm going to take one piece of this leather and I'm going to make an item frame. I know you guys are saying, but wait, wait, one tap. Isn't this wasting? You should be using this for books. Well, just hold on, I would say, because this item frame is going to be very, very important. Trust me. I've got this empty map here and I think I'm going to make a map of our little base and no, that is, that isn't exactly what I did not want to see. No, dude, our base this is like on the edge of the map. That, that sucks, man. I can't really do anything to fix that, so I that's kind of a rip. I, I don't really like how that looks, so I'm just going to take that down and uh, I'll figure this out some other day. Okay, so back to the bookshelf business. I was able to craft one more bookshelf here. Oh, that, that, is, that is not a bookshelf. That's a door. Let me place that bookshelf down. We got level 14 enchants now. That's great. 
And now I started digging down below our base because the ravine that I used to go to is kind of far and I don't really want to swim all the way out there when I want to mine. If I had like a mine that was right below my base, it would be so much more convenient. This was pretty hard though, uh, trying to mine under all this water. I had to constantly place down doors and like readjust. Uh, I've been mining for a bit now and I still haven't come across a cave, but I can hear tons of spiders, so that's a good sign. I'm gathering some of this coal and yeah, this is kind of a nice way to just mine around. Now if I can find a cave, I'll have really easy access to it right from my base. I eventually fell into a mine shaft. That's pretty freaking lucky, but first I'm gonna grab this iron and then I'll go check it out. All right, let's see how big this mine shaft is. That's not good. That's not good. Let's see. This is our last hope and it ends. That is very tiny. Gonna have to go and mine around some more, I guess. I kept on mining and I found a real mine shaft this time with some redstone ore. Also, I think I found where all those spider sounds were coming from because there was a spider spawner here. Well, that is gonna fix all of our needs for string if we ever need a bunch of string. Golden apple inside of the chest. This was a pretty great dungeon. Is this the first dungeon that we found in this world? I actually don't remember remember finding a different dungeon in here. While well, inside of the second chest, we had some melon seeds and some music discs. And there were 13 in Cat. Cat is actually one of my favorite music discs, if you did not know. But yeah, now we have melon and pumpkin seeds. That's pretty cool. And now I'm back at home. I'm trying to think about where I can put these pumpkin and melon seeds. Is it'll be pretty cool to have one of these in a farm. I'm thinking about kind of having them on the outskirts, maybe. But I don't really know right now. I'm just going to tuck them away inside of a chest. Well, it's time to get back to mining, I guess. So I headed back down into our previous mine shaft, And I found a amethyst geode. This is the first time I've actually ever found one since the 1.17 update. I think they're kind of rare. I don't really know what you can make with these amethyst geo thingies. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to look that up after. This stuff is really cool looking though. Oh, I forgot there's actually wooden mine shafts, man. How have I forgotten about this? I should just be getting this. It's way easier to get than shipwrecks. And so for a while, I gathered ores as well as mine up most of this geode. And soon I would come across some diamonds that you're trying to tunnel to some nearby mob sounds. Whoa, this one is looking like it's a big vein here. I think, is this eight vein? I think this is an eight vein. Don't mind that creeper dying in the background, but we got an eight vein of diamonds. That is crazy. Let's go. Nearly suffocated right after that though. That was a close call. And another notable discovery was this minecart with a chest. It had some pumpkin seeds as well as a fresh iron pickaxe for me. Uh, I'm just going to trade it out. I don't know why I still have this iron pickaxe honestly i've never used it in a while we'll pass these mobs right here which i swiftly killed there was a really weird looking dirt room it was just super flat and just a bunch of dirt on the ground next to this room was another minecart with a chest and this one had a golden apple as well as some more torches and some bread pretty similar to the other one all right now my inventory is actually starting to fill up i think it might be time to head back pretty soon and dump off all of the loot that i've gathered on this trip so far Wow, my building blocks chest is actually 100% perfectly full. I'm gonna move some of these blocks and turn this chest into another building blocks chest because I know that one's gonna get full pretty soon. I also decided just to throw away this iron pickaxe. I don't really see myself using it very soon. I've got a diamond one, which is way better right now. Well, now we have 14 diamonds in total, which is crazy. I think we can make some more pieces of armor here. I'm gonna start off with a chest plate and also make a helmet as well. Cover me with diamonds. Finally, we get this achievement. Now, I'm close to level 30, but I am not close to getting a full enchantment set up, that is going to take a while. Now this whole time I've been smelting my gold, which means time to go back into the nether and trade with those piglins, because I really want to get this max enchantment table as soon as possible. That way we can actually have some good armor that we can use against the dragon in the final fight. While I was in the nether, I also collected some quartz, because this does give you some levels, and I was still trying to get to level 30. Also, while I was having some chill time with this piglin over here trading with him, a baby hoglin just came out of nowhere and started biting me, man. But luckily, it ran away after a few hits. So, we got good news and bad news. The good news is, we got two more bookshelves. And the bad news is, leather isn't really our problem anymore, it's more about paper. And I think we all know what that means. It's time to head back onto our spruce boat over here and find some more shipwrecks. Let's go. Paper really is a pain to get. So we've done this about a billion times in this series, but I found one of my old shipwrecks and the first chest I looted, but I missed the second chest. And inside the second chest, we had a bunch of paper as well as bamboo. I think that's really good. I don't know what I can do with bamboo, but I know it's pretty rare in like a normal world. Well, that's interesting. We could always use it as like an infinite fuel source if we really need to. I also spotted this underground sand structure right here. Had a chest inside with some wheat and an empty map. Once I arrived home on this rainy night, I was able to craft two more bookshelves. We are really getting close now. We have a level 22 chance. We are definitely going to hit it soon, man. I can feel it.
I spent the next two or so days smelting some more stone and constructing the rest of this circular outline on the outside of our base. I think I want to have some more areas that I can build off of on the edge of this circle as well, so we just have tons of opportunities to expand even more. I also think I'm actually going to move my enchantment setup to like an outside area on the circle, so I'm going to have to get some more wood so I can rebuild all those bookshelves when moving it. So now that I'm done with this outer circle, I'm going to take some cobblestone and make a bunch of slabs. I'm thinking about behind this portal right here, I might create like a platform or something extending off of this main circle where mobs can spawn because it could be a good way of getting XP because right now I've barely fought in any hostile mobs. So I think this might be helpful kind of to make like a really crude mob spawner basically. I was kind of contemplating if I wanted to make it look nice or not with like a circle but in the end I ultimately decided to make it a square because I might end up tearing this down later on because this probably won't look too good but I just want it for now so I can actually have some access to mobs. Okay Pigman you gotta get out of here. I can't have these kids keep on spawning in here and going into the overworld. You're not allowed here man. Alright, anyway, this is kind of the square. I probably need to make it bigger. I think it's an 11 by 11 right now. Um, I just don't want to spend too much time making like a mob spawner platform. It's not that important. So on day 59, I was actually in the middle of the nether with a bunch of building blocks and a clean inventory because we were heading over to- Hey, hey, chill! I'm trying to talk right now, man. Get rid of you as well. There we go. Anyways, we're a little over halfway through the 100 days mark, and I need to get some Eye of Enders to actually fight the Ender Dragon, and I think it's probably a good time now to start finding a nether fortress in the nether. Time to start my journey. I found one about 600 or so blocks away from my main spawning point, which is not too bad. Also some cores here, and seeing that I'm almost level 30, I'm just gonna go get these real quick and see if I can level up. Let's go, level 30, now we just gotta get those bookshelves in as fast as possible. We can get ready for some great enchants now. We are now inside of the nether fortress because we got the achievement, a terrible fortress. Let's go see what this place has to offer for us. The main thing we're looking for are blaze spawners, ooh glowstone over here. I also killed a bunch of wither skeletons, but none of them dropped me a skull, which I kind of expected because that was going to take a really long time, since they're super rare. I did, however, find a blaze spawner, but this is when it kind of dawned on me that I needed a bow to fight these guys, because with my bare, f or not bare fist, with my sword at least meleeing them, it was a lot harder trying to get closer to them, it was just more dangerous. But I'm not going back just for a bow, so I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up. There we go, finally got our first blaze rod. I think I'm going to get like 8 or 9 of these, that should be enough, I think. And so for the next couple of days, I stayed inside of the fortress looting the chests as well as farming the blazes. I was able to get about 9 blaze rods at the end, so I consider this a successful trip. But as you can see in this clip right here, I was getting attacked by piglins at the same time, it was kind of a mess. Before we leave though, I wanted to do one more thing. I'm going to gather these nether words right here because I might end up doing some potion brewing for the dragon fight. Not 100% sure though because I probably will not need it. Ah, uh, home sweet home, it's good to be back. Thank you, Nether, for all the stuff that you gave us, but I like the overworld one billion times better, I'm sorry. Also, I was able to craft four Ice of Ender because I already had four Under Pearls. I'm guessing I got that from trading with the Piglins, but now I think the only thing left we really gotta worry about is just making our enchantment table maxed. I'm probably gonna need a little bit more paper as well as a little bit more leather, but paper is gonna be the hardest thing to get for sure. So right now, since we have level 22 enchants, I'm pretty sure, let's see, we got Projectile Protection 4 on our helmet and Fire Protection 3 on our test plate. Not the greatest, uh, I want actual protection, so we're gonna have to wait on that. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Why are you guys always coming through my portal? I said you're not allowed here. Well, since all we need is basically just paper, since leather is really easy to get, I went on out on a hopefully final journey to find some shipwrecks to get paper. And at this point, I've done it a billion times, so here's just some highlights. And a paper chest, let's go. Well, it was a dark rainy night when I arrived home, but I had 26 paper in total now. That has to be enough. Now it's just time to get some leather. Let's go, day 66, we're officially two thirds of the way there. I spent this day trading with piglins, just the usual, you know what we gotta do to get leather. Okay, I just realized I put some books in the trash chest by accident. I think I got those from shipwreck hunting. But now, uh, let's craft up our bookshelves. We're gonna need a lot of wood for this. Alright, bookshelf. We can make five of them, that's gotta be enough, surely. Now when I place them in, that's level 24, come on. Yes sir, that is level 30 enchants. I got an extra bookshelf though, which I'm just gonna place down in the corner. Oh, uh, that's looking sick. We got level 30 max enchantments now. Time to go on an enchanting spree. I'm enchanting my chest plate first. We got protection four. Let's see what we got on it though. Ah, it's only protection four. That kind of hurts, but that is great. Protection four is always great. And yeah, helmet, not looking too good. I think I might just go for a reroll here, but I do not have a grind zone right now. And I also do not have enough levels. So that's kind of a rip. I'm gonna just wear this armor for now though. It's pretty good. And on day 67, the first thing I did was craft a grindstone because we're gonna need to disenchant this helmet if I wanted to enchant it again. This prod two is not good enough for us. 
Well, I needed to figure out a way of getting levels fast and easily. The first thing I thought of doing was just go mining a bit, try to find some mobs as well as just get some coal and lapis, as those do give you levels. Yeah, as you can see in this mini time lapse here, uh, it was kind of crazy down there. A lot of mobs, which was good. A lot of coal and redstone lying around too. All right, so actually I did manage to hit level 30, but that took a really long time and I don't think I'll be doing that again. But anyway, since we're level 30 now, let's head on over to this and enchant our helmet. Ooh, Aqua Affinity, that, that could be really good. Just please have something else on it. Oh, it's just Aqua Affinity. That's unfortunate. Um, I'm going to keep it for now, though. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have to reroll that as well, man. I just want some Prof 4 at least. Come on. And I continued the next day in the nether, uh, gathering some quartz because I felt like this could be a bit easier. Oh, and a zombie followed me from the overworld. Quartz, I think, gives you around the same XP as coal, but this is just way easier to find. So yeah, I spent the whole day doing this. It was very much worth it, though, because once I enchanted my helmet, I saw Unbreaking 3. Look at that thing, man. Prot 3, Aqua Affinity, Unbreaking 3, Respiration 3. Very, very close to max. We got super lucky on that one. I then went mining because I was trying to find some more diamonds to get some more armor and we also needed some more gold because we had none left. Gotta trade with those piglins. Well I did find some diamonds and this was at the perfect time as well because my pickaxe was slowly starting to break. It was gonna break very soon and I needed some more diamonds to replace this as well as make some armor. Alright I actually have been mining so much I have tons of just excess ores. Anyway with these 8 diamonds here I'm gonna craft some leggings. We're gonna enchant this thing and we have unbreaking 3. Now a lot of times when I do this I only get unbreaking 3. That's what's been happening in the past couple of times let's see what we can get here oh fire protection ah it's four though i mean i'll just keep it for now maybe i'll come back to that when i have my full set and try to make it better but it, it's all right i guess fire protection might be useful i'm also gonna make an anvil since we just got stacks and stacks of iron from all my mining trips how much does it cost to repair this thing? Ooh, two diamonds and it's not even full. Do I need, I probably need three diamonds. I might just make a new pickaxe to be honest. I don't know if this is really worth it. Plus it only has efficiency one on it. It's not that good of an enchant. All right, so now that I have my diamond pickaxe, we only have one diamond left, which means we need three more diamonds until we can get the boots. And then we would finally be max. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Probably just one more mining trip and we'll have that done. Anyways, in the meantime, let's work on the base a little bit because I need to start getting some more platforms on the side so I don't have to have everything just clumped up in the middle right here. I'm going to be building some platforms that are extended from the sides and each section will have its own use. Like, I'll make one section probably like an enchanting area. I also finally found what block I was going to use instead of that cobblestone for those pillars. I tried many things including like granite, which really did not look good at all. But in the end, I settled with blackstone, polished blackstone to be exact, because I had a decent amount of it from the nether. You don't have to smelt it or anything. And here's me inside of the nether trying to farm some blackstone with piglins constantly trying to kill me. And now finally here's what it looks like. I've got these two like kind of rooms or sections coming out from the circle and I've already moved some things. I haven't moved everything yet as you can tell. Gotta move this enchantment setup. Do I have enough wood for it though? Let me check. Oh no, yeah, we do have enough wood for this. Okay, I guess I can move this thing. I was not really sure before. Yeah, it's kind of in the way. It's in a bad spot. But heading over here, we kind of got our like storage system kind of place. I don't really like the look of this. I should have made this a bit bigger. It's kind of small. But for now, I have all my chests and other storage things right here. My bed is here as well. I don't know where to put that thing. And coming over to this side, this area is just blank. I might put some like grindstones, anvils, all that kind of stuff over there. I also got to get rid of this like portal. This is in a bad spot as well. Anyways, behind here, we have our big mob spawning platform. I made this a much bigger. I don't know if you guys can tell because we really need some things to spawn. Maybe like a, a wandering trader would be great, but we do not have any emeralds right now. I guess a zombified villager would honestly be amazing. That's going to be pretty rare though. I spent the rest of day 77 bartering with the piglins because there's actually a 2% chance of dropping an ender pearl. And while I was trading with this guy, a ghast came along and when I was trying to deflect the shots, I accidentally hit him and I had to kill him because he was going aggressive at me. So I'm really sorry about that. He did drop us an ender pearl though. That's actually insane. Yeah, and I swear I only gave the guy like a couple of gold bars. But anyway, I sat here and tried to hit this thing back to him. It was really embarrassing. I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong, but I just could not even hit it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. The guest eventually decided that I was not worth his time and just ran away. That was pretty embarrassing. And once I was home and settled down, I put my ender pearls inside my chest and I made a brewing stand. This was a mistake though because we do not have any sand, which means no glass, which means no making glass bottles. The piglins do have a small chance of dropping water bottles though, so I was kind of saved. I shouldn't need too many bottles. I'm going to place this brewing stand on this other kind of rim over here. I'm going to put it on top of a calcite block. I'll probably move my anvil and my like enchanting area and all that kind of stuff over here as well. This is a pretty nice spot. Later in the day, I decided to just move my enchantment table now because it was kind of blocking my pathway to all my chests, so it was kind of a struggle. I decided to move it next to my brewing area, basically made a platform extending behind it. 
I almost used two full stacks of wood, which I did not expect at all, so that's basically all of our wood supply gone. But at the end, here we go, this is what it's looking like. It kind of fits pretty well behind that brewing stand, and I'll probably decorate the edge a little bit nicer to make it fit more into this build. So I'm going to craft some lanterns for the enchantment area because it's kind of dark over there. I'm going to place these guys right here. Now this whole enchantment and brewing setup just looks a lot more nicer when it's all bright and lit up. Also, when I was running back, I noticed we had some mobs spawning on the platform. Finally, we got a skeleton and a creeper. So I really cannot have this creeper blowing up anywhere near my chests or my base at all. So I played this super safe. I eventually lured him to one of the side corners where I just didn't have much built. So if he did explode, nothing bad would really happen. I did kill him though. Super easy. Just got to back up after every hit. The skeleton on the other hand, I have no idea where he went. He might have fallen off, or maybe he just went into the nether portal. Could not find him though, but it's okay. So today is day 81, and I really want this to be the last mining trip of this video. We've been mining a lot, and I'm just so close to being done. I just need a couple more diamonds, so I can get those diamond boots and finish out my setup. While I'm down in the mines, I also got a bunch of XP from killing mobs, as well as mining redstone and coal. So we kind of hit two birds with one stone there. Also, our beloved diamond pickaxe finally broke. I think it had efficiency one on it, so it wasn't the greatest. We had a great long run with that thing. Good thing I got my backup on me though. And we're about to hit level 30 here, so I actually might just go back and enchant this thing real quick. And good thing I did because it was efficiency 3, and it was crazy it had unbreaking 3, efficiency 3, and fortune 2. What did we just get? That was some crazy luck there. It's probably one of the best pickaxes that I could have gotten, actually. And I did eventually find some diamonds. Let me get this redstone first though. It was time to try out this fortune 2 pickaxe. So on the first one, we get two. All right. Second one, we get one. And then we get three. Jeez, okay. And we get one. And one. And one. Alrighty. That's pretty good though. We got nine diamonds in total. Way more than we needed. The rest of the mining was pretty boring. I don't think I gotta say anything for that. Something that was interesting, however, was we finally got mobs to spawn on that square platform over there. We had two creepers over there by the daytime. I don't really want to kill them though since I don't really need any gunpowder right now. And at nighttime, I returned with 30 levels crafted my boots. I want to throw these guys away. I really don't need these anymore. Now it's time for the first enchantment at the new setup. What do we got here? Ooh, it's gonna be on breaking three. That could be good, but I really want to see protection. Oh my lord, it's just on breaking three. Well, that's kind of sad. I'm not sure if I really want to re-roll this because I feel like it's gonna take a while to get back to level 30 again. Well, you know what? I just could not accept this. I had to get better in chance. So on day 89, I grinded all the way back and we are back at level 30 now. So the dream would definitely be feather falling here. Ooh, Death Strider 3. That's actually really fitting since we're like in an ocean only world. And we get Unbreaking 3, sadly no protection, just fire protection. But I mean, Death Strider 3 is pretty cool because we are in an ocean only world, so we do swim faster. I don't really go in the water that much, but this is kind of fitting, so I'm just gonna keep it. I don't want to spend too much time working on this anyway. I then crafted a bow to get ready for this dragon fight because of course we're gonna need a bow for this. And since I'm level 27, I can only do level 2 enchants here, but it should still be decent enough. And it looks like we're going to be getting power 2, unbreaking 2, punch 1. That is pretty good for level 2 enchants. Now we just gotta hope that we got arrows. Now I just made my eyes of ender right now and I have 11. But to be safe, I'm going to go back down into the nether. And I'm going to try to get one more batch of ender pearls, just in case, because I do not want to be short. And after a bit of trading with the piglins, I finally got an ender pearl. Once I picked it up though, a bunch of people just started rushing me. We had hoglins out here, we had multiple piglins. It was getting pretty dangerous. Yeah, I actually got to have hearts, but thankfully we're out of here alive. We cannot be ending it right now. Let's get back home. Once I was home, I found out that I actually had feathers inside of my miscellaneous chest. Did I get those from shipwreck hunting? Well anyways, that's amazing news because that means we can craft arrows. On day 91, I did some finishing touches, I gathered a bit more arrows, and also planted some melon seeds because I want some melons for glistering melons. And if you didn't know, you can use those melons to make healing potions. Well, when I grabbed my bow meal to try to speed up the process, uh, I realized that you actually cannot bow meal the actual melon to grow out. You can just bow meal the stem. I was devastated by this, so I I don't really know what to do. I'm just gonna place a couple of these stems around and hopefully like a melon will grow out of them. I moved on though, I made a couple of strength 2 potions that last a minute and 30 seconds. These are gonna be good for when I'm meleeing the dragon. Also our melons actually grew a lot quicker than I expected so this thing was already ready for harvest. I crafted my glistering melon and I was basically all good to go. Now I had my redstone, I had my gunpowder, I had my backup bottle of water. Now it's just time to play the waiting game. Alright, so I just threw away my last batch of strength potions because I don't want the strength one for 8 minutes. Uh, I messed up. It's not redstone, it's glowstone. And this should give me strength too. 
Yes, it does. There we go. And now I can add the gunpowder and that should make it a splash potion. All right, for real now though, it's day 92 and I think we're finally done preparing. We've got all of our potions, we've got our armor, we've got our weapons, got my water bucket and some golden apples as well. I think we might have overprepared for this fight, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so getting to the end portal is a little bit more complicated than you would think in this ocean only world. Now when you create an ocean only world in Minecraft, the eyes of Ender actually do not work. I came across this problem in a test world and I looked it up and apparently, yeah, it did, they just don't work. So what I had to do is I had to drop a certain file of this world into this website called Trunkbase, which I've used before, and this should show us where all the strongholds are so we can actually get to the end, because without this, there's literally no way we would be able to find it. And as you can see in the background right now, I am traveling to one of the coordinates that it gave me. I'll see you guys there soon. So I think we have arrived. We should just be able to dig down right here and we should find the stronghold somewhere. I'm going to start working on it. And soon enough, while I was digging down, I came across some of stone bricks, which only meant one thing. We finally found our stronghold. So actually, if you keep on continuing through the path, you actually come right across the portal. Good thing it was easier for me to find it because the stronghold is probably pretty large and I don't want to spend like a whole day looking for the portal. I'm going to go loot first though. Now, when I came across my first life, Library, I gathered a bunch of books and inside the chest I had knockback and sharpness and flame and piercing. I'm just gonna take both of them. Now inside of this other chest right here we got smite 4 knockback as well as impaling 4. These are all right books. I also got another decent book from another chest. I found a different library this time. One thing's for sure though I'm not gonna need books for a very long time now. And in another chest we got protection 3 and sharpness 3. Okay, so now I've basically gone around the whole entire stronghold and a lot of the loot was like all right, not the best, except for the libraries at least. My inventory is also getting very full, but I think now it is a perfect time to jump inside of the portal and take on this dragon. Ooh, here we go guys, the portal is lit up, and we jumping inside. Now we got the advancement to the end, time to burrow myself out of this hole. Now here it is, the mighty dragon, it's time for the epic battle. And now it was just a couple of hits left and we should be good. Come on, we're so close to getting there. There we go, one tab has freed the end. We just did it guys, we have beaten the Ender Dragon in an ocean only world in less than 100 days as well. Time to collect my winnings right here, we got over 60 levels of XP. And of course I'm going to take this dragon egg with me, probably gonna have it on display somewhere in my base. And I think it's time to head back home guys. Well that's that, we've beaten the Ender Dragon and I think I'm just gonna go skip this right here. I think all of us have already seen the end credits. Well, after going home and sorting everything out, we landed perfectly on day 100. Now, of course, that is going to conclude this video. I just want to say thank you so much. If you've stuck through the whole thing, this video has turned out a lot longer than I expected. I think it's about 45 minutes or so, maybe even longer than that. I'm not even sure yet though because I haven't edited everything together, but I'm super excited to see what you guys think about this series. Now we cannot forget the comment shoutout winners of the last episode, and here is today's four lucky winners. Congratulations! There was a lot more than four people who commented this, but I just randomly picked four people that I saw in the comments. Now if you didn't make it in this episode, it's super easy to have a chance in the next one. All you gotta do is comment down today's code word, which is going to be netherite. Now do not tell anybody this, this is very secret, top secret information. But yeah, I'm just kidding. Next episode, I'll pick four lucky winners to be featured in the end of the video. And now for a final time, I want to thank all of you guys for sticking with me to the end of the video. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. If we hit, I don't know, around 1,500 likes or so, I'll know that you guys really like this series and I'll continue it. Because of course, I'll only continue the series if you guys really enjoy them. Now that is going to be all for today, guys. Hope all of you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.